All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So if you're looking to see how easy it is to upgrade your 9th gen Honda Civic's boring factory stereo to one that supports wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, you've come to the right place. We're gonna take this radio and transform it from this to this. All right, so if you have a 9th gen Honda Civic, in my case, it's a 2012, there's two different dashboard layouts that we're gonna be dealing with. So in the early ones, like my 2012, there's this line, very visible right here, where this half is, um, you can see the HVAC vent and the hazard button, and this side is the stereo. They also made one where the unit was more, this piece was one integrated piece. So the stereo that I'm gonna be installing is a joying Android-based uh, touchscreen stereo, and they make the best Android stereos in the world. So that's why I chose to go with that one. You'll see why in a little bit. So that's the thing you have to consider. They make one for either style of dashboard, whether you have the split one like this or the later style one that like the 13 through 15 would have. So the first thing we have to do is get this one out of here. It's actually really easy to do. There's just a few steps to get the old one removed that I'm gonna show you. So being that it's Honda, there's really nothing holding it on, but some clips. And these little clips, you can just kind of pull out. You just wanna be careful about it and understand that there will be some wiring, like for this economy button, behind the dash panel. It helps to lower the steering wheel all the way down. All right, so you can see, we've got, we just popped it loose. That's all you really have to do is just pop it loose. You don't even have to take that one off. All right, the next thing we have to do is get this panel down below the stereo loose. The reason we have to take this off is there are two screws under here that are holding the stereo in place or eight millimeter bolts. And I'm also gonna be adding a USB port right here. So I'll need to take it off anyway. The same thing with this, if we just get a pry tool started under it, you can kinda. So as far as this bottom one goes, there are a couple of clips holding on at the bottom, but there's also two Phillips head screws up here at the top. All right, so once you get the screws out, you can see um, there's a couple harnesses we will just unplug from the back. One for the cigarette lighter and one for the auxiliary port, like that. And then I'm going to be installing a USB cable. I'll show you how that looks when I get to it here to allow us to plug in right here, I'll make a hole, and plug the cable into the back of the stereo, the new stereo, and that will allow us to run our wired. Um, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay or whatever else. All right, so once we get those two screws out of the bottom now, so there should really be nothing holding the radio in except some clips. So we just want to carefully kind of pry and kind of get a hold of it over here. Like that. And it will pop out. We've got some wiring to unplug. So this one is our antenna connection. So pop that out. This one, there's a little clip here we'll push down. There's a little clip that pushes down. This one, there's just a little tab we have to push. Like that. And we can rotate this. And then that will come out. And what you want to be careful of is there's these sharp metal brackets on the factory stereo. You don't want them dragging all over the dashboard because it will scratch it up. So that's all there is to that. We won't be needing um, this. So we'll set it aside. So now we can go ahead and start looking at what came in our package here. A couple little manuals. Can harness. There's our GPS antenna. Is an external microphone, which is optional. The unit has a built-in microphone 
on the faceplate, um, which for my purposes, I use it. If you do a lot of Bluetooth calling, some people say that this one sounds slightly better. Uh, so you may want to route that. So the best thing to do would be to route it up the dash through the pillar and then have it come out up here. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that for my installation. They also include two LTE antennas. So the unit does have a built-in port for a SIM card that supports LTE. Uh, in the United States, it only supports a couple of bands. Uh, so I don't really use that when I install it. Um, I use a Wi-Fi hotspot for my phone if I need uh, internet on the unit. Uh, if you're strictly using it for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you won't even need that. Here's a couple USB extension cords uh, from the unit. So, like I said, some people just use this and run this out somewhere. I will have one of these, like I always do in my installations, going into the glove box. Uh, get to the unit itself. Here's the main CPU right here. This is the, they have two versions of the unit. One has uh, four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabyte ROM. This is the six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte ROM version, which is if you plan to uh, put a lot of uh, videos and music on the unit, it helps to have that extra ROM and you can install a lot more programs. Um, the extra gig, six gigs of RAM, uh, it does make it perform a little bit faster, but you'll be happy with either one. I can promise you that. And then here is the screen itself. Okay, so I also went ahead and it's not showed in the, shown in this video, but I installed a backup camera. My 2012 did not have a factory backup camera. If you do have a factory backup camera, it will retain that. Um, so I have the wine for that kind of just the excess wiring coming into the glove box um, The camera that I used mounts on the deck lid it does require removing uh, The trim drilling a small hole through the trunk and then fishing the wire Down the passenger side through the pillar You know under the trim pieces up into the glove box here, and then I can feed it from here up into this area to prepare to install the stereo, there's a few things we have to transfer over. So this is the one removed here. You can see there's these white clips that are all around the screen. We need to remove three of them to go across the top of here, and then three of them to go across the bottom. And we just carefully pry them apart, and they come off, and then they snap into place on here. It helps to use a small flathead screwdriver. And that is what will retain it in the dash, just like the factory stereo. Um, we cannot transfer these brackets because they do not, um, they will not fit on the new uh, stereo unit itself. It is very light. It will just clip to the back of the screen and then everything will be snapped in place right there. Also in preparation, I went ahead and took my plastic piece down here and drilled a, it's between 11 16 and three quarters hole. Um, and that will allow the USB port that I'm installing to just snap right into place there. Also, we'll un, if we kind of unpackage our wiring harness, you can see we've got this bundle of wires here. It's really, really simple. You'll see me just snap all these into the factory wiring, and then this plugs in to the back of the head unit. And say, okay, what about my backup camera? Here you go. Here is the wire or the RCA input for that right there. All right, our next consideration is the GPS antenna here. It needs to have a clear view of the sky. It does not need to be outside of the vehicle and it does not even need to be on top of the dashboard. You just want it to be um, up in the dashboard and not have anything above it except plastic. So the Civic's a little bit weird with the multi level dashboard here. So it looks like the easiest place to put it where we still have plenty of windshield above it is gonna be right here. Since we already have this removed, there's this little spot on top of the instrument cluster right in this area here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of double-sided tape, some 3M double-sided tape, and I'm going to apply it to the bottom of the antenna. 
and I'm going to fix it underneath here, right here in the little void. That way this is able to snap back into place. Double sided right there to the top of the instrument cluster. Got that wiring coming out over here. I went ahead and ran that extra USB port into here. You can just reach right through behind here and grab it. We've got all of our factory connections plugged in. So this is our antenna. Again, it's all, all the terminations are made to power the factory antenna amplifier. Everything else just plugs in. Um, the only other thing is there's two sets of auxiliary wires and these are meant to, that's the backup. These are meant to be plugged in to the joining unit to retain like the factory auxiliary input. I don't know exactly which one does that. And I don't really plan on using the factory auxiliary port but if I had to guess, I'd say it's the ones coming from this smaller harness here. My guess would be if you had a unit that had the Bluetooth built into the iMid screen, that the other set would be coming from the factory Bluetooth module. If you wanted to retain functionality of it with the new stereo, you could do that. Although there's no reason to because the new stereo has all of that built into it. But I think that's what that's for. Just to clear up any confusion. Again. So what I'll do is I'll slide this through here. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Okay, you can see how that works. That snapped into place there. Look very, very factory. Then I just feed the cord up, and that will also get plugged in to one of the USB ports on the back of the stereo, the one that says OTG. All right, so now we're going to mount the actual um, computer to the screen. So this cable pulls out, as you can see a little bit here. It only fits one way. It's like an old-fashioned hard drive cable. And as you push it in, it kind of captures the side pieces there like that. Okay, and then it's going to fold some of that cable back in. And then these, the unit just kind of snaps onto the headpiece like that. And that is nice and solid. That's not going to pull out of there. You don't have to worry about it coming out. Those are very secure clips. So let me go over the back just real quick. If you have um, an aftermarket subwoofer, this does have a subwoofer out, which would be just this mono one connection here. You just remove these little covers for what you want to use. So it does also have, you know, obviously front left and right, rear left and right outputs for a mono external amplifier if you so desire. The big thing with the Joying is it also has um, a optical you could use a toss link cable, an optical output, and a coaxial digital output. If you're into the really high-end audio that you could connect to external amplifiers digitally without using mono cables, which would give you really high sound quality. And that's the thing. These radios truly are a bargain for the high-end audio that's built into them. Um, I'm just going to be using the internal amplifier, which is high-end itself, and it sounds really, really good will be a major upgrade to the sound in your Civic. I'm not using either one of those in this installation. Um, here's the two other USB ports. So I'll be plugging the one that I ran down here into this one. And that's, like I said, it says OTG on it. And this one here will be going into the glove box. Um, there's for your external mic connection. This is where antenna is going to plug in. Uh, as far as my installation goes, um, that's it for over here. These are for your 4G antennas if you use that. Um, I will need to take this off. This is where a GPS antenna is going to connect to. And then the main harness just plugs in right here. These are your Wi-Fi antennas. Um, and then you just want to make sure it should come this way, but the can out and the can in wires need to be connected right here. This is basically um, for vehicles with a CAN bus adapter you want to use that setup there. All right, ready to 
get everything plugged in here. Okay, so, so the last thing to do is just to plug in the main harness. Make sure nothing gets pinched or smashed. There should be plenty of room back there to fold, kind of fold everything down out of the way. Pull our dashboard out. Before I clip it in though, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the key and make sure that it works. Look at that, we had screen come on instantly all right so here's how it looks it looks really good I'm gonna go through the initial setup with you guys real quick all right so when you first turn it on just take a few seconds it'll come right up so the first thing is we'll go ahead and try out the radio make sure we have sound okay so the radio does work one thing you'll notice is that the radio is also displayed up here on the iMid screen, so it can switch stations. It doesn't give you track information, but that's just something that it does, and then you can obviously scroll to your other stuff on your iMid screen. Okay, so the radio works. Um, a few initial settings, depending on where you're at, is you wanna go here, settings. It is already set up for USA. So I don't need to change anything there. I'm gonna turn RDS on, which just means it will display uh, track information. Go back here. Okay, so it does just show the track information in a really very small space here. It would be nice if there was an update to make it a little bit bigger. Um, but this is a very neat radio application. I won't spend a real long time on it, but um, you can, go through and do multiple presets for FM and AM radio as well. You can just scroll through your different, uh, like FM 1, 2, and 3, stuff like that. So that works really well. Uh, we'll get out of here real quick. Just things that do work just from the factory. So obviously steering wheel controls, you can see they work. Everything just works, okay? There's no, if we hit our source button, it will scroll through sources. There's no programming required for the steering wheel controls and um, you cannot program them to do anything different. They are set up to work just like factory steering wheel controls. Okay, so just something to keep in mind there. Um, there is a built-in uh, music player. As far as the home screen itself, you can just kind of like move these around, delete these. I like to put the clock in the middle and keep the music player over to the right and the FM radio here. Just click on the music player. Um, depending on what you have installed, there's just a few samples that came on this one. Okay, so it's kind of the tour of the home screen. You've got an optional navigation button here. You can install an offline navigation app or program it to Google Maps. If you just click it the first time, it will say there's no application set. So you go to the setup and you pick the program that you want. Um, so we're gonna leave that alone for now. Um, the next one is Bluetooth calling. Um, you can connect your pair your phone. Uh, make Bluetooth calls that way, hands-free. Obviously, this is video. So if you have videos installed on the head unit, there's just like a sample one on here. The display is pretty incredible, to be honest with you, how nice it looks. And then we have settings here. We can click on, it'll take us right into our settings. So there are a few initial settings that I like to go through each time. So first of all, if you wanna put it on Wi-Fi, you'll go to the wireless LAN, turn on the Wi-Fi and pick from your wi preferred Wi-Fi network and your password information to get onto there. Everything else in here, we don't really use unless you have a SIM card installed. Um, next thing is device. So a few things here. First thing I wanna go to is sound. And I turn off the keypad tones. I'll show you what they sound like. Okay, so if you want it to beep every time you touch the screen, but it gets annoying quickly, so I turn keypad tones off. I turn loudness on. If you have an external amplifier connected, the amp output wire, that's how you can turn it on and off. 
Uh, the power condition won't worry about. Uh, subwoofer, you can control. So if you have a subwoofer attached, which I do not in this case, this is your high and low pass crossover, as well as your output volume. So you can control the volume of, of the subwoofer output independently of the volume on the stereo. Uh, which is really, really neat if you dial it in. Basically, you can turn the subwoofer settings, if you have those on the subwoofer itself, up all the way, and then just control it from here. Uh, equalizer, I like to go through right away because I like my curve set up very specific. They do have a bunch of um, presets to choose from. This makes a huge difference in this car. I mean, the stock Honda speakers sound amazing so i have the way i like my curve to look which sounds good if we go to the field this is just your balance and fade you know you can move it all around um obviously i, I just keep it everything in the middle all right surround sound by default this is turned on um you can do like a virtual surround basically it just kind of adds a time delay to the speakers you can play with this um, but i like to turn it off i don't feel i need it bass enhancement so you can add separately front and rear speakers um, extra bass and then the, that same subwoofer settings are right here which is what i just showed you in the settings basically that's all that is and then bass filter this is your high and low pass for your front and rear speakers and this is really neat because if you have a subwoofer installed you can cut some of the extremely low bass that's going to your front and rear speakers and kind of make them sound better. They won't distort as much at high volume and let the subwoofer do the work. So that's just a quick tour in there and our sound settings. Um, you can get to that also by just doing this double drop down, hitting the settings button right there. There's also these quick um, uh, press buttons here, like turning the screen off at night, you know, sometimes if it's too much brightness for you. All right, so once we move on from our sound settings, um, there's really, you know, not a lot else to go in here, except if you want speed compensating volume turned on. So the faster you move in the vehicle, the more it raises the volume. That's really good, uh, if, especially if your car makes a lot of noise on the highway. I'm going to leave that off for now. If we go into general settings, um, there's just some things here where, like, OSD time would be, it will display the time while you're watching a video. So that means, so mirror view on reverse image, that would be if your backup camera is oriented wrong, um, you could press that to switch it. Uh, we have backlight control. So how I have this set up is, it says small light control off. And the reason being is, so when I turn on my headlights, that will not only dim the screen, but it will illuminate these uh, capacitive buttons on the side here, which is home, back, that's the radio button, and that's the navigation. And then obviously you have your volume control. The physical volume control is probably the best feature about this unit. Uh, besides the fact that the hardware in enjoying stereo is excellent. So go on Amazon, look at a aftermarket stereo, uh, Android stereo for a Civic like this, look at all the pictures of it. Look at the back of the unit. You'll see it's just an integrated into the screen, chintzy, low spec unit. They usually have only about two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of ROM, and the processors are junk. You will not be happy with that if you want a high-end experience. Spend a little bit more money and you do get what you pay for. The screen is amazing. They may look similar, but they're not. You will not find a physical volume control on any of those other units. This is almost a joy and exclusive thing. It's very nice to be able to just quickly turn the volume up and down, tap it for mute, instead of trying to play with capacitive buttons or something like that. All right, so here in lantern settings, this is where we can set the color of those lights. So when you come out at night and turn it on, uh, I like to match kind of the Honda factory white color. So. If you can tap the white, it'll get you close, but then it's too bright. So I kind of bring everything down. You can make it whatever color you want. You can also scroll through multiple colors. Um, so that's an option. You know, steering wheel settings, again, we're not going to play with that. Those are set by the CAN bus. That would be, this is just kind of generic for multiple vehicles. 
All right, so we go to factory settings. The password is 3368. Okay, now in here, um, there really shouldn't be anything you have to mess with. This is gonna be kind of for those of you who maybe got the unit and this was not set up correctly. So where it says car model, this is where we set up the canvas. We go in here. So what you'd want is XP Honda CRV 2012. So that's for my this unit. Obviously, this is a 2012. That would also apply to 2013. I also have options of 14, 15, and 17. Um, so if you had a 14 or 15 CRV, uh, the appropriate unit for that, you could go ahead and click on that. So, and what the reason that matters is that's what controls. So if I open my door right now, you can see it shows the door open. Um, it's what sends the information that the backup camera's on. If you have factory uh, backup sensors, like a radar system, it would that communicate that over the CAN bus network. That's kind of what that's for. So I'm not gonna go over everything in here. Um, you can kind of go through it. I, I would be very careful in the factory settings that you don't really go changing um, a whole bunch of stuff because you can mess it up. There are a few different home launchers you can pick from. Um, you can go in here, just change this real quick. I prefer the default, the UI06. I think it looks really good. Um, this one, you can set, obviously, your wallpapers, kind of like that Ocean HD wallpaper, but you can download off the Play Store, the Android Play Store, any wallpaper you want. That's what's so great about this unit. Um, all right, so back to the settings just real quick. There's a few things in here that we do need to change. You'll probably want to change also, especially if you're installing them in the same car as I am. All right, so up here, back at the top, where it says original car agreement. We're going to click that. All right, this is where we can kind of change some of the canvas stuff. So external temperature on or off. My car does not have an external temp sensor. So even though it says it's on, it's not going to display it anywhere. Um, display radar on and off. So what this is for, I'll show you real quick. So if I put it in reverse, backup camera that I installed, you can see that it has this little picture of a car with radar sensors. This car does not have any factory radar. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and then you'll see that that disappears. Okay. Also, my camera has built-in guidelines. You can turn off the parking lines right there next. So now I just have that one set of parking lines. Alternatively, you could disable the parking lines that are built into your camera and use the factory ones. Just depends on what you want to do. Um, you can turn whether it shows the doors opening or closing, driver's door position, right or left. This is important because it will exchange it. If you open your rear doors and they don't show the correct position, you can change the exchange right there. It says AC information on or off. On some cars that communicate um, over the CAN bus, the uh, HVAC information, um, it will display on the screen. This Civic does not support that. Again, so it's not going to show anything about that. Uh, let's see, really nothing else. Um, again, if your temperature units are displayed wrong, you can change it to Celsius and Fahrenheit. This trim level of car does not support any of that. If we go on to user settings, location, this is just, you know, standard Android location uh, granting. Um, let's see. Main thing we want to see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll go into the system settings here. I do need to set the date and time. It is not 0042, which would be 1242 a.m. It's actually 1142 a.m. So if I go into date and time, uh, what I want to click on is change the time zone. So it's set for China standard time right now. So we're going to set our time zone. Find United States. Okay. And New York for Eastern Standard. So you can see it's already corrected the time to 11.42. And if I go back, um, you can obviously change from 24-hour format to 12-hour format, which I did. And um, if you want to get use network provided time, which is by default on, that will actually use the GPS built in to the unit to get your time. 
All right, so there's some accessibility options. These are just kind of standard Android stuff. You don't really want to play uh, with anything like that. I will just show you um, some of the specs here. It's running Android 10 currently. So we have the octa-core 2 gigahertz processor with 8 gigabytes of memory and 128 gigabytes of ROM storage, like I showed you. So this is the fully pumped up unit. And as you can see, everything is silky smooth on the screen. Everything's very responsive. So that's just our initial settings right there. You can add a Google account and add Google settings, which I do recommend if you want to set up any kind of, um, obviously, contact syncing or whatever. Um, what I prefer to do is to create a separate Google account that is not my primary Google account, and I use it just for my car stereos. And then I can copy contacts from one Google account to another. You can do that um, within Google outside of the vehicle. And then that allows you to just have an account for here. That way it's not compromised. You know, if your car goes in for service or something like that, do you really want someone to have access to your Google account? Um, I don't, so I just prefer to set up a separate account. It also prevents the unit from wiping any contacts or anything like that. Okay, so that pretty much covers the settings. Uh, again, it's Android. If we click this button here, it will bring up the standard, all the apps that are available. You can see we have YouTube, Waze, Voice Search, uh, Play Store. All of this type of stuff makes it basically just like an Android tablet. You do have to be connected to a Wi-Fi network or a cellular network for any of the apps to run. Um, a lot of people do not really use this unit that way. They will use it just for the video player, the um, obviously the music player, the radio, and then the big way that people use it is for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which I'll show you how we do right now. So that application uses this CarLink 2.0 app. So what I like to do is the apps that I use the most, I put on this screen just to the right of the home screen. So you can swipe once. There's a couple apps right there. Really? Not much else. Um, you can download, uh, I have another video that shows you how to put Netflix on one of these units, YouTube. Obviously these are not for you to use while you're driving the vehicle. It would be for a passenger to watch or for you to use while you're sitting still. Um, I don't really use Waze on the app either. I use um, Android Auto, but I'll show you here, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in action, and how that works. All right, so obviously, we know that I just put this USB port in under here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my USB-C cable in here. And we'll open the CarLink 2.0 app that I drug to the home screen here. And say waiting for device to connect. So this is automatically going to work for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. There's going to be some setup stuff you have to do on the phone. It's going to ask you, you know, obviously the stuff that any Android Auto... You have to grant the permissions. It just takes a second. A new look to Android Auto functioning. Um, Pandora automatically pulled up. That's how I usually run Pandora and the mapping app. You can also run Waze or any of the other applications on here. What time is it? It's 11.49 a.m. So, you know, everything works as it should. If you get a phone call, it'll come through. All that stuff, you, you do need to pair um, Bluetooth separately with your phone in the other Bluetooth app. It does not pair Bluetooth automatically like some of the uh, factory head units do. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug there. Show you Apple CarPlay. It's pretty much just standard Apple CarPlay if you know what that looks like. If not, if you're buying this unit to get it, you'll be excited. So plug in the iPhone. It's going to kind of do some similar stuff if you've never connected it. It'll give you a screen that says allow, you know, the CarPlay to work. All right, so you can see it works. It's incredibly nice. All right, you can see, so Apple CarPlay comes up. Um, everything works as Apple CarPlay should work. Go to the settings, you can change the wallpaper and all that type of stuff. You can change how your appearance, 
interference like if you like the always dark theme um, this will automatically switch um, to night mode when you turn your headlights on and off just like it should Android Auto works the same way works perfectly just like any aftermarket stereo all right so we can go ahead and exit out of here so that's just a quick overview um, of the joying stereo really really wonderful product you know like i said the power is amazing it's worth every penny you pay for it uh, hopefully i covered a lot of you know things that you may run into when you're first setting up the unit and how to address them this is the look i like right here you can do a bunch of changes a really neat thing about this ui i i think is that when you turn on the headlights you can see that not only does it dim the screen, but it makes the uh, appearance of everything change. And the icons even change to a darker mode. It's easier on your eyes at night. Looks really, really good. If you have an older version, as long as you're running Android 10, there are they, are, they do release multiple firmware updates um, to keep everything up to date on your Join stereo. So that's another thing you get from Join is they. They do constant firmware updates. They address any bugs with the software that may come up. The iMid screen, as you can see, it's showing extension right now. Uh, it kind of changes depending on what. So if I go into the music playing app right now, you can see that will actually show everything about the music. So, or as far as a counter that I'm playing a song, track number so it says folder 16 track 4 it actually is track 4 right here um, and it shows a USB connection which it's not really a USB connection it's just a built-in player but it so it integrates very nicely with the factory system it looks very factory uh, it kind of really does away with the need for that screen up there except for like your mileage and stuff that you would normally use it for and your, your fuel mileage and stuff Everything's focused right here. It looks much better how it should have been from the factory, in my opinion. Again, you have your quick buttons for, like, the stereo. And it's nice to have the back button like that. And obviously, no matter where you're at, you can hit the home button here. Or there's another home button right there. Another back button right here. Here's your window closer, just like any Android tablet if you're used to that. All right, everyone, that pretty much wraps it up. Just a installation and a little overview video for the joying unit for 9th Gen Honda Civic. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. As always, there'll be links in the description to where you can buy this unit. I highly recommend it. I've used many joying units over the years, and most of them purchased with my own money, and they all work excellent. So... If the video helped you out, be sure to like it, subscribe for more, and until next time, we'll see you later.